I'm Ted Berg for SNY.TV, and this edition of the Mets Minor League Report profiles a very young prospect in the organization, one of the first players drafted by Sandy Alderson and Paul DePodesta. In 2011, the Mets selected high school shortstop Philip Evans in the 15th round, but paid him $650,000 to sign, roughly the equivalent of supplemental first round money. While short in stature, Evans is a slick fielder with potential at the plate and he showed the ability to adjust on the fly as his first season as a pro quickly took him through several levels of the system. I started out in the GCL, played a few games there, then I thought I was going home, but they kept sending me to different places. I went up to Kingsport for a few games, helped them out there, and then uh, back up to Brooklyn for a couple games. With many levels still to go, a player as young as Evans has a long road to the big leagues. Well, he's got a lot of things to work on in the sense of, you know, uh, comparing him to the rest of our minor league system in baseball. There's lots of things, it's just a lot of the nuances. He's got the uh, raw skill to do things, but it's just kind of cleaning those things up, making him a little bit more efficient. Uh, he's got a little power in his swing. Uh, you know, he's got to cut down his swing at times. It gets a little big, but he makes quick adjustments, which is which is nice. And I, I love the way he carries himself, and uh, he loves to play. He's got a lot of passion, and uh, you know, he's a ways away because of being a high school kid, but uh, he, he brings a lot to the table. Calling into the studio to tell us more about Evans is Toby Hyde from MetsMinorLeagueBlog.com. Toby, how are you? Better for talking to you, Ted. Toby, I'm sure you are. And we always hear about extended spring training. We know Philip Evans is there right now. What happens down there, and why does a team start out a young player there? Extended spring training really is like spring training. Um, day starts at 7 a.m. for the ball players. They go through drills and then a pregame routine, which includes batting practice, and all the pitchers get their throwing routines in, um, which, is, again, I guess it went out of order, preceded by some fundamental work, whether it's infield defense or cutoffs or game situations or base running. And then you play a game that you know starts either at 10 or at noon, and it's either an interest squad or, since the Mets are on the east coast of Florida and there are only two other teams over there uh, this time of year, Cardinals and Marlins. So they see the same players a lot on the other side. They see their teammates a lot. Um, the players describe it as some ver vision of purgatory or something. I mean, no one wants to be there. They all want to be on full-season teams. As far as why a team like the Mets keeps a player like Evans or Brandon Nimmo there, it's a really good opportunity to work on technique and fundamentals um, where, you know, even at the Savannah level, you're playing a game, if not every day, you know, 13 out of 14 days or something. And so game preparation takes precedence. But if you really want to work fundamentals and in particular technique, um, extended spring training gives you an opportunity to do more of that, at just the more hours for that, and in more controlled settings, uh, more scrimmages and things like that. So will we see Evans playing anywhere in uniform this year? Uh, absolutely. He, sh he should break uh, with Brooklyn, um, and he should be in New York City in under a week. And do you imagine he's a shortstop long term, or will they move him to second base eventually? That's a good question. Um, you know, I think that for most, frankly, for most low minor shortstops, there's always that question, can he play there? Um, you know, his hands are good. Um, his feet work really well. Um, his arm is just about average by the standards of Major League shortstop, so um, that might be a question to force him to second. And right now he's... An average big league runner, uh, he's been timed last, last I heard it, 4.3 down the line to first base. You can play shortstop if you're an average runner. If you, if you lose speed as you age, which is fairly common, it's hard to play shortstop and be a below average runner. So it might be that, that just pure foot speed moves him off a of shortstop eventually, but obviously it's the kind of thing where the Mets hope that he gets quicker as he ages and gets a little stronger um, and stays at shortstop. Toby, thanks so much. Always a pleasure. Evans is clearly a confident player, but he's aware of what he needs to do. I'm just trying to be more consistent with my swing, my ground balls, all my footwork in the infield, and just pretty much my all-around game. Phil has it. If, if a player has it, he just loves to compete. He's got a lot of self-confidence, and I think he looks at things like, oh, this is going to be a challenge, but, but I'm ready for it. And, and that's really hard to teach. We can help him with his hitting, his fielding, his throwing, but the confidence, he, he brought that with him when he came here, and, I, and it's a nice tool to have. Philip Evans is years away from the major leagues and no sure bet to ever get there. But the Mets made a significant investment in his talent, so his development certainly merits watching moving forward. I'm Ted Berg, and we'll see you next time on the Mets Minor League Report.